Yo, Elliot, I have a new girlfriend that I have been seeing, and I'm just wondering if there's any books or resources I can look into on how to keep the relationship interesting and keep her around because I really like her and I want to make her my wife. Thanks. I'm 21 years old and she's 20. Yeah, there are. And I'm so happy that when I turned 40, I discovered the red pill, <laughs> right? Red pill, right? I know there's a lot of negativity in the manosphere and, you know, there's a lot of negative association with red pill and alpha and stuff like that, you know, being an alpha male. But I tell you, it's so important for men to, to deepen themselves in these understanding, especially intersexual dynamics. Intersexual dynamics are so important because... Well, first of all, you got to know how to relate to women and relating to women is not what we've been told. We've been told how to relate to women by women. And if women knew how they wanted us to really relate to them, they would be lesbians because they would actually love the way women behave towards them. But women can't stand women. So when women tell you how to behave, they're doing it from a place of how a woman thinks. And then they're going to resent you because they're not lesbians or she's not a lesbian. A lot of these butch women, they like beta males because they, they behave more like a, a woman. They could, you know, so they got a girlfriend. But not you, my bro. You have to understand the polarity in the sexual relationship and your role as a man, not a partner. That's feminist, new age, homosexual talk. She's not your partner. She's your wife. Right. And I'm saying that I know you're not married, but you want to make her your wife. You got to start thinking about it that way. Right. Otherwise, is she just your. Inter now, if y'all are just in it for the entertainment. Oh, we're getting good feelings from each other. Right. I'm dipping my spoon in her pudding every day. And oh, it just feels so good. Mm -hmm. Then that's not a real relationship. That's y'all just using each other's bodies, using each other's feelings. But if you have intention. If you want to grow a life and men who have wives, regardless of the divorce statistics, which all are, are all a fruit of feminism, all a fruit of fornication culture, hookup culture, feminism, all of that has destroyed relationships. So those relationships that end in divorce is because those two people came came at it with wrong perspective. Both of them had wrong perspective. My hope for you guys who listen to me and follow my instructions in this program is you're going to come to this from the right perspective and then you're going to work towards either developing in a woman that right perspective or you're going to find one that already has the right perspective so my thoughts when you guys have girlfriends is oh you're on your way to making this person your wife otherwise don't bother me with your questions don't bother me at all if you're just in a in, a, in an entertainment relationship no intentions of anything except, and here's the one, here's the big BS. We're just, I'm just getting to, we're just getting to see if we're compatible for six years. This is what people do. <laughs> so dumb, right? No intentionality. And this is the part, this is one of the peak aspects of effeminacy in men today in all areas of our life. We have no intention. With your job, you have no intention. With your woman, you have no intention. We have no intentions. We just look at, we're just seeking experience and pleasure. This is why we live in the S hole that we live in. You, my man, are intentional, right? So you're dealing with her and you're dealing with the situation as if she's becoming your wife. Now, one of the reasons why marriages fail or relationships fail is because they have because men go into it with this blue pill mindset and women go into it with this feminist mindset, which is a which is a perversion of the gender roles. Men don't know what their real role is as a man. They don't know anything about being a man. And what a lot of men do is they have hang ups about masculinity. They have hang ups because they call it toxic. I don't want to be whatever it is, or whatever hang ups they have about what it means to be an alpha male. Right. White knight syndrome blue pill simp type behavior and thinking right and they think women like that <laughs> women will tolerate you and take you shopping but they will never respect you when you think that way women respect the men that they say i hate him i can't stand him 
Because on the inside, they're like, oh, man, that's a real man. But they can't say that on the outside because feminism and, you know, women think differently than they actually behave. Right? As they say, never listen to what a woman says. Look at what she does. So you can't listen to women about what women want. Women don't even know what they want. Uh, and in the same regard, you got to be aware of what it means to be with a truly feminine woman. I'll give you some resources because that's really what you asked me for. Hard Times Create Strong Men, Stefan Arnio, and his other book called The Oracle. They basically are one for the man, one for the woman. Hard Times Create Strong Men is about men, right? And it's, it's a great book. It tells his story. He's got solid principles. He knows what he's talking about. It's a good book. May he rest in peace. Hard Times Create Strong Men by Stephen Arneo. The Oracle is basically the female version of King Warrior Magician Lover. The height of a woman, a woman's highest expression is not the queen. Did you know that? The highest expression of the man is the king. So that you would think that, well, the highest expression of the woman is the queen, but it's not. It's not. A woman who really goes into the depth of her femininity becomes an oracle. So you have the queen, you have the whore, which is like the lover. You have the, um, what is the warrior woman? I can't remember, but the, some, some warrior type, right? Amazon woman. And then the oracle, which is the magician. That the, the, the peak of a woman's femininity and the height of her self-actualization -actual, is the female version of the magician. Because a woman is tapped into in a certain intuition. I often say women have a certain grace that men don't have because they're more lowly. They're closer to the earth. All of their power is down low, down low. Our power is up here. That's why king with the crown. But the woman, her oracle nature, her ability to sense things and to put that sense to the service of her man. Because a real powerful woman doesn't control her man overtly. She suggests. She uses subtle suggestions. So you, I keep doing this because it's the magician quality in the man. But it's the oracle in the woman that's in the height of her of her self-actualization. So a woman who's really, you know, she's getting there, it takes some time, just like it does for a man to become a man, there, uh, to become a king. You know, there are, there, there are chronological events that must happen, right? You guys are mostly in your 20s. You're not, you're not a king until you're, you're past your middle age. That's chronological. If you study the work, the, the book, or the audio program, um, the, the Amazing Development of Men, the woman who wrote that, who she gets it, understands that, that there's a chronology, there's a chronology. Well, it's the same thing with a woman, right? So a woman may start out as, as a whore, she may have that warrior thing, right? Oh, princess, right? Princess is the opposite of the warrior, princess, right? Which if you watch all the Disney princess movies, they're all like warriors, right? Mulan, right? Even like even like Frozen, right? She's, she's a warrior, right? So you get a lot of that warrior woman, which is the princess. Um, she'll go through that. And then she'll become a queen. She becomes a queen when she compliments her king. When she learns how to truly relate to a man, usually in the form of being a wife, she's really, she's in her, she's in her queen. But the thing is, as a queen, she still gets her power from the king. She gets her power from the man. Queen, a queen has no power. A queen can't, you can't, a queen can't make a king. Let me put it that way, right? The, the, the husband of the queen is the queen's husband, but the wife of the king is a queen. The king makes a queen. So she still gets her power from the king. An oracle gets her power from God. She bypasses altogether and goes right to the creator in the graces that he affords uniquely women in her womb, right? That's where her power is. There's a lot of power in that womb. So, you know, people think I think poorly of women and they're wrong. I think poorly of disordered women, which is 90% of them. A rightly ordered woman is the most beautiful thing in the world. Most men can't even see a rightly ordered woman. That's why y'all choose these wrong women. You're choosing whores and princesses. <laughs> Princesses and whores. That's who you're choosing, not realize or not looking for a woman that will make a good queen and oracle. All right?
You got to look for that queen and oracle aspect. You know how you, when you're vetting a woman, if you, because whore and princess is easy, right? Whore is, you know, she's seductive, right? She's sexy. She turns me on, gives me a boner. Uh, princess is fun, right? She's like that warrior, right? So most of y'all are looking for these whores and princesses. You don't want to, you know, that's, that's immature. That's lacking. A queen, when you're looking for these women, does she allow herself to be led by a king, a man? Man will always be king to a woman. Can she submit to my authority? Does she willfully gleefully submit to my authority. I remember my wife, but when I used to be a beta male, I didn't know any better. It turned, I, by the grace of God, I got a good wife. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. But I remember when we were younger, she would always yield to my, she would, she would defer to my opinions or to my authority. I was like, wow, this girl just does whatever I want her to do, right? And I didn't realize at the time, you know, I, I, I didn't know, I was thinking all kinds of wrong thoughts at the time. Now as a, as a grown man and she's my queen and she's my oracle, she's got a strong oracle in her, right? Uh, I, I look back and I realize, wow, the fact that she always submitted to me or deferred to my authority and all kinds of just even small things, right? She, she used to say to me, I want you to make the decision, Elliot. Right, and I used to be like, eh, "Come on," because I was a beta male. Oh, come on! Why don't you make a decision? Why don't you step up? I used to think that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't know. Now I look back and I realize, wow, man, she was showing the signs of a good queen. So you got to look for that in a woman. She can't be a queen if she cannot submit to a king. If a woman cannot submit to a man, then she ain't gonna work. Right? Not in marriage. She, you know what she's going to do? She's going to go submit to her boss. You go submit to your boss, your corporate boss. Right? You know how these women can climb up the ladder too? Submit. They open their legs. So you're going to submit to a man somewhere. You're going to submit to a man somewhere. Right? So might as well be the man that you love. But, you know, nah. the oracle aspect is important for it to be cultivated. A woman who is intuitive, who has a... Um, and this is, this is not from the book, but this is just me expounding on these things as I've discovered them. A woman who is developing, she's still immature in her oracle, will allow her feelings to, and you know, her gut reactions as they are a raw intuition to guide things. And then she will relent. She'll, she'll hold on to it. I have a bad feeling about that. Sometimes I have to remind my wife, I'm like, that's because you're a woman. You're supposed to be afraid. Good. I'm happy you have a good feeling about that, but I'm not listening to you just because you're scared, right? She knows that now because she has a developed oracle, but a young woman who has a disordered, or not disordered, but an immature oracle, but has a disordered attachment to it will say, will, will, will want a man to follow her feelings. A lot of men, this, you know, I'm giving you all this advice and it's long-term relationship stuff too. I know that's your question. Men who submit to their wives' fears have bad lives. Men who submit to the fear of their wives have bad lives because she has an immature oracle that's running the show. A mature oracle, and this is, you know, again, by the grace of God, my wife. A mature oracle in a woman, in a woman will suggest. She will suggest, but she will not push. She will speak up, but she's detached. And I've watched my wife do that with me. There's so many times my wife was right. <laughs> so many times she was right. But she, but she said, I want to let you do what you want to do. Partly because I'm so stubborn and so hard-headed that like, she had no choice anyway. It's just me. I'm going to do what I want to do anyway, right? So that's why she and I work well together, right? But she realized also in herself, I'm going to just, and that's her nature too. I'm going to let you be. And you know what a beautiful thing about her and a beautiful oracle will do too? Is when you repent, and I've had to repent, when you repent, like, damn, I was wrong. She's not going to rub it in your face. Only an immature woman will rub it in your face. Because an oracle wants a strong man. She wants her man to be strong uh, so she won't denigrate him. She will only lift him up. I think about, I think about Alexander the Great, right? and I'm not going to get this all right, but I know that he used to consult an oracle, 
And he also had a very overbearing mother. And I think these two women in his life is a part of what allowed him to be such a powerful conqueror. Because his mother lifted him up, I think because his father was kind of a tyrant or a coward or something. His mother lifted him up and the, the oracle at Delphi, right? The oracle at Delphi also lifted him up because she saw his power and she affirmed him in it and gave him guidance. I think the story about him and the Gordian knot, right? Nobody could untie this knot. The oracle was like, whoever can untie this knot, which was like something they called the Gordian knot or something like that. Whoever will un can untie this knot will conquer the world, right? And so this is how he found the oracle. He comes and he's like, I heard about this knot and whoever could untie the knot is gonna uh, rule the world. And she's like, yeah. And I think of course, cause she's an oracle. She was like, yeah, this is it. He's gonna get it. He pulls out his sword and goes, whap, <laughs> chops the rope. It comes coming, tumbling down. He's like, there, done. And it was like, here he is, right? And so a woman who sees that kind of vigor and power in a man, they'll do all they can in their power to lift him up. Because why? As he ascends, so do they disordered families, disordered women, they want to rise above the man, but they can't go anywhere. <laughs> they can't go anywhere. You know where they end up? Divorced, lonely. <laughs> know your role and play your part. It's not a matter of better or worse. It's about the subtleties of our different stations. Women are great leaders in a covert way through the oracle, not the king, which is overt. So I know I'm talking about a lot of different things, but you asked me about books and this is important because everything I'm saying right now is intersexual dynamics. These are all intersexual dynamics. You need to know these things. Rolo Tomasi, whatever your opinion of him, his books have been very instrumental, been very helpful to me. I would say his second book is more important than his first book. And I haven't read the fourth book yet, which sounds great. Maybe I'll get it. But it's called Preventative Medicine. And it's about understanding female nature and he starts with the cycles of female nature which is really important the smallest cycle is their monthly cycle if you don't understand how a woman be how she is operating based on her monthly cycles you're gonna be lost you're gonna be confused all kinds of confused if you don't understand a woman's cycles so that's a brilliant book and he brings that up he says, uh, what else can I look to to keep the relationship interesting and keep her around because I really like her? I'll give you this last final book. So there's three books so far. Well, three authors anyway. I've recommended this book for a lot of the men who are already in relationships that are suffering. They're already in relationships and it's called, uh, it's called The Saving a low sex marriage, saving a low sex marriage, uh, using dread and for the long game, something like that. It's by the blue pill professor. It's an ebook. You can get it on Amazon. I say, read that book, not because you're in a low sex marriage, but to prevent a low sex marriage. This guy wrote this book because he realized that he was going about things wrong. And all of a sudden, like his wo his woman turned cold on him. And he's like, what? What happened? Like, as soon as they got married, they had a great relationship. As soon as they got married, she was like, well, I don't have to have sex with you anymore, right? And he was like, wait, whoa, ha. And then he didn't know what to do about it. He did his research, and then he discovered these things, and he wrote this book. And you could use the book to repair a broken, dy broken dynamics in a relationship, or... I invite you to read it so that you are aware of where things go wrong because most guys are starting from a place that is going to go wrong. So those are all really, really, really important, really good things, really good books that I would recommend you read if you really like this woman, you're wanting to uh, marry her, and you uh, want to do it the right way. I'll give you this one last resource Right. Watch the YouTube video Four Stages of Courtship by Father Chad Ripperger. It's on his Census Fidelium YouTube channel. 
I've been talking a lot about, you know, wanting to create stuff on courtship, and I do, and I will, right, so that I can provide it from my perspective for you guys, but that's the framework right there, right? You want to know about courtship? Uh, you're not going to like what he has to say. <laughs> Nobody likes what he has to say because it's so contrary to the postmodern degenerate mind, um, but you should read it so that you know what a rightly ordered courtship looks like if you really want to make this woman your wife. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, how millions of men are fighting back and winning the war against masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit makemenstrongagain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.